hear me, watcher. It does not mean empowerment from the Holy Ghost it does not mean so that you can go and, and do supernatural things for your own glory. It means for you to die to yourself, conform to the will of Jesus, to be like Jesus, first of all, to love the heart of God. To love the heart of God. And when you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your, your mind, and all your soul, you are willing to submit to the image of Jesus. That is the true empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That is the real fruit of the Spirit. That is real evidence that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. When you say, God, I want to do this, but I love you more. So I want to be like Jesus because I love you, Jesus. That is the real empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The first thing that comes into my mind is a little bit of how, when, a lot of how the gospel has been kind of tarnished or ruined in a way with the American church. You know, nowadays they're not really saying it how it is anymore. They just want to share like just pure encouragement or just good things that are pleasing to the ear and a, either prosperity or... So in the same way you receive power and that's where you get the boldness from. Anybody can be a socially awkward person. Anybody can be socially shy. They can be... They can have social anxiety. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon that person, they get this supernatural boldness to say whatever the Lord wants them to say. 100%. Why do you think people do or have this method? Because this is something I've seen very often where people say, well, in order for me to reach said person, because the Word of God says, the Word of God says that we're all sinners, right? And that's why we need Christ. But I've seen people that go out of their way and say, well, I'm going to sin along with that person so that person can see that I'm also a sinner and that God still loves me even though I'm, I'm partaking in the sin. Basically affirming the sin. Why, why do you think people do that? Interesting question. Huh. Uh, woo, very interesting. <laughs> right? So I kind of, it could be multiple things. Like the first thing that comes into my mind is a little bit of how, when, a lot of how the gospel has been kind of tarnished or ruined in a way with the American church. You know, nowadays they're not really saying it how it is. They more, they just want to share like just pure encouragement or just good things that are pleasing to the ear. And they either prosperity or, or just like God still loves you. Like, oh, there's a specific saying, it goes, God's God will still love you as you God loves you as you are and I saw a different version of that that, that seems more correct in my eyes which God loves you despite how you are because Christ died for the sinner right not and he does he loves the sinner but not the sin and so I think with the people's mentality when they say oh well if you're sinning like I'm just gonna keep sinning too right on. they're gonna say like well if God loves me either way like why am I gonna change really but part of believing is repenting of sin it's you got to start off by acknowledging the sin and then now turning away from it you know repentance means to have a changed mindset to turn away from sin and we can feel bad all we want in those high moments in worship at the church but like what does your life look like outside of those high moments of in worship Definitely. so I and I've had people ask me how do you get away from sin I say well acknowledge it Turn from it, but also seek seek God, because obviously we're gonna make mistakes. It's gonna keep happening, maybe not as often, because now you've seen the light of it. But the closer you grow to God, to God, the closer you grow to God, the further you get away from sin. And so that's why I feel like people still justify the sin, because they just say, "Well, if God still loves me as as I am, might might as well just keep sinning, or if I'm gonna keep failing, might as well." Fail, fail a little a little harder or they just feel like maybe they're too far gone into sin to now pursue God but that's where I guess the topic goes of like how much good things do we have to do enough of to now be able to pursue God or to go to church or yeah. to talk to our pastor or that one family member or friend that's a Christian but it's not about the good things you do or our works based salvation it's yeah. off by grace and grace alone that's why i love ephesians 2 8 and 9. definitely we're saved by grace and by grace alone like I, I don't know why i've seen so many people actually think like okay the more i sin because that's you're right 100 percent. A, a lot of the doctrine that is preached in the american church is this keep doing what you're doing and god loves you but the more you think about it why is man's perception of Christianity valid 
why isn't the biblical version valid, right? Because a man can say you're going to be okay, but the, the reality is far from it. What, I'm, what I mean by that, if I tell you, you cannot study and you'll still pass the test. You can believe what I say to make yourself feel good. You can give yourself that delusion and you can make yourself think, well, if I don't study, I'm still going to pass the test because this person said I was. The teacher told me, or yeah, the teacher, because people that preach are considered teachers, quote unquote. They have the responsibility of a teacher. So if the teacher tells me, you'll be fine. You don't have to study the test. It's, you're, you'll still pass. You take the test, you flunk the test. Was that teacher's perspective? Was that teacher's advice? Was it beneficial to you or not? You still flunk the test and the teacher told you you don't have to you don't have to study, you don't have to do anything, you will still pass the test. It has no value to it, right? Yeah. Because yeah. that wasn't the truth. The truth is you have to study for the test. In other words, you have to obey Jesus and what he told us to do you read first John chapter 2 it says if you really love God you will obey his commandments and those that do not love God do not obey his commandments but why is that they don't obey his commandments because they don't value his words they don't value him as a person they don't value him as a God they see the Word of God as optional this is an option you can take but it is not the foundation of how creation is supposed to be because God has a divine design the divine design the original design was always Eden the original design was always the garden of Eden but the devil tampered with the mind of Adam and because the devil tampered with the mind of Adam everything went corrupt so 100% on par We're, even in the church it's very sad how they know the truth the people that are up there the teachers are telling people you're still going to pass the test you don't have to study you don't have to do anything you don't have to do what Jesus told you to do. Just say a little prayer and you'll be fine. But the reality is that if they don't obey the Lord Jesus, that teacher's opinion has no value. Because at the end of the, of the day, at the, end of, at the end of their life, if they don't repent, if they're not born again like Jesus said, and if they keep on deliberately sinning when they know in the back of their mind, because the conscience will convict you. The Holy Spirit will use your conscience to convict you. And if you deny that, you, you deny the Lordship of Christ. Repentance of sin, very big. I was privileged to give a quick word for the youth this past Thursday, and I, I focused it on what what worship really is, right? It's not just the songs that we sing at the church. Right that's, on. that's technically praise. It's singing songs of praise, but worship, I, I looked at what it means, and I, I give credit to this, this video I saw by Impact Ministries and it, it defined worship for me and I just basically reflected it in, into the word but the little examples I threw in but I give credit to that video right right and so worship is basically surrendering towards God and then offering service towards him and so the first uh, scripture I referenced with that was in Isaiah when God chose to turn his face from the Israelites and not hear them when they were giving them prayers and songs because their hearts were far from him their repentance wasn't sincere over their their sin and from there i connected it into matthew when jesus fasted 40 days 40 nights in the desert right, the right. devil goes to tempt him and he's like he take him and the third time he attempts to tempt him he takes him to a high mountain to see all the kingdoms and their glory he's like, i'll give you all of this if, if you bow down and worship me and I kind of made a joke at it, out of it. I was like, as if it, it was even his to give. Like, he can manipulate the earth how he wants, but mm -hmm. God is the owner of all things. He created all things. So I gave an example of how, imagine my sister, I offer her this really nice truck that's outside the church right now. If she just, like, worships me and serves me however I want. But it's not even my truck. It's my sister over here. Uh, Susana is her name. God bless her. She's one of our youth teachers. Mm. I was like, I can offer her the truck, my sister, but it's not even my truck. It's Susana's truck. I can steal her keys and say, here, look, do whatever you want, but it's not under my name. It's under Susana's name. She pays for that. She paid for that probably. It's probably paid off. God bless her. But it's not even mine to give. So that's how I saw it with Satan offering Jesus the kingdoms and the earth. Like, it's yeah, his, bro. Definitely. He's, he's God yeah. in the flesh. Yeah. But... Um, the point is he wasn't asking Jesus for songs of praise he wasn't asking him to clap his hands or or just jump up all over the altar like he asked him to 
fully surrender to him and to serve him. And so I gave a few examples. One of them was with, I'm trying to recall it right now. I remembered. Okay, here's so here was one. So I put that in a war. When someone defeat admits defeat towards the other and surrenders to them, the other one has total freedom to do whatever they want with the one who surrendered. And so when you surrender to, with God as as believers, surrendering right. towards God is like everything. You put your heart, your goals, your desires, your dreams, your bodies, your possessions. You give it all to God, and then you you can you will see how God works through you in that. Especially when you offer your service towards Him. When you offer your service, you, like you give your mind, your body to follow God's will. By doing this, we align with God's desires. Making it easier to hear His voice, to understand what He wants us to do through them. And that's where true worship really begins. And God tra transforms what you're doing with that. And He starts impacting the lives that connect connected. Right, worship is a lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle, yes. That was one of my closing points, bro. Mm. Dang. I loved, <laughs> yeah. I loved that yeah. word. Praise God, bro, for that, that word. And so, he... Let me see. The Lord, because the Black Repentance. He explained that. John... Okay, here it is. One of the points is that worship must be done in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23, 24. Let me go to it really fast. Man, I really loved this word. It gave me chills. Amen. I was having second thoughts before, <laughs> and I was like, like I want something that will like really impact them. But I was like, God, like it's not even me who speaks. It's you who speaks through us when Amen. we give a word, give a Bible study, yeah. or just have fellowship like this. 100%. It's always God who leads it. But John 4, 23, 24, it says, pick up the brightness a little bit. This is a New King James Version. It says, um, But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So here Jesus had explained to the woman by the well right, right. that there will be a time when worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. And He looks for people to worship Him like this. And the theme he was explaining is that when you worship God in truth, which is according to what's real, what's really real is His Word. As it says in John 17, a quote, 17, 17, Sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. And so true worship happens when you follow God's commands. And if you love Him, you will follow His commandments. Amen. Oh, man, it's connecting. Whew. By walking in the Spirit, Holy Spirit and studying His Word. Show my this can occur when we sing, when you can sing songs of praise, but you recognize how the lyrics reflect the biblical truths mm. in the songs. So like when we hear a song that says like, God is good or great is thy faithfulness, when you respond to that, it's because you're really surrendering to the truth that's being shared in the songs. Right. And you submit to that. That's why you react. That's how you get joyful or you realize that through some hard times, God really was faithful in those moments, not because like you're the world, the universe revolves around you, but because you're his child. So if you really believed in him, he's gonna take care of his kid. Just as a normal parent, whether they're a believer or not, if they take care of their child, when they ask of something, God will more wanna take care of you because you're his child, you've believed in him. But going back to the worship, when you read your Bible, you know the truth, you obey them, you understand more what it means to surrender towards Him Amen. because you see the example of, of Jesus, of the apostles, those Amen. that came after them. Right, and it continues. Right. They completely surrendered their lives to Him and they offered their service. So they carried the gospel. They made disciples of all nations. They baptized. And that's the Great Commission. That's what Jesus calls us to do. Right, 100%. And so towards the end, like I mentioned, that worship belongs to God alone. You know, I referenced Revelation chapter 22 when John bows down to an angel after he showed him some visions. Mm. And the angel's like, hold on, bro. Yeah. Chill. <laughs> like, I'm just like, yeah. you know, I'm like a servant. I'm a servant of God. It's like, worship him. It belongs to him. Amen. And this is where the devil went wrong to begin with. Because he wanted, instead of the worship to come through him with the music or the ministry, he wanted the worship to come to him. And that was his downfall. And so here, this angel acknowledged 
It don't worship me, bro. Worship the one who created all things, basically. The one who is worthy. The one who is worthy of it all. Man, yeah. stop thinking of some songs right now. Shamakaya. Woo! But as far as worship, you can do it in anything. You can worship God through anything and everything. At the, at the beginning of this word, I asked everybody to write down three things in an index card that mm. they're grateful for. That's deep. And and why they were grateful. I asked like three mm -hmm. people to share why they were grateful for one of those things. And so as as I concluded, I said, you see that index card that you wrote three things down for? I want you to surrender those things to God and ask how you can serve Him through those things. Because mm. clearly these three things mean a lot to you. Most people wrote family, for my education, for my fellow Christian friends, for my job. I wrote down my family, my job, and my church. And because I really care about those things greatly. Yeah. So as I, we conclude, I, I just give a quick prayer. I let them reflect on those things too. I, I said, God, how can I surrender these things to you? And how can I serve you through these things? Because if all things belong to you and we're just stewards, you entrust us with the things that belong to you, how can I be a faithful servant in serving you by surrendering these things to you? But, man, it, was, it, it took some time to reflect over this because right, right. these topics mean a lot to me. Because these things that I mentioned, God knows how much I pray for those things. But I can go off on mission trips all I want all over the world or different parts of the country but it means nothing if I'm not focusing on my first mission which is my family or my local church right that on. I grew up with mm -hmm. and so those things more than anything is what what we should be surrendering and and serving in more than anything because it's, it's God's and everyone we know is going to spend an eternity somewhere where that's going to be God only knows but if we can play a role in helping them you know, be united with the Lord at the end of it all, then it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, the role of the evangelist, the role of the missionary is actually, if not the most important, one of the most important roles. I mean, every role is important. Mm -hmm. We're all the body of Christ. But, like we spoke about earlier, the verse in Romans, how beautiful are the feet of messengers that bring the good news of the gospel. So, Wherever you, if, wherever you turn, you see somebody walking, that's a soul. That person will either spend eternity in heaven or not in heaven, in hell. That's, that's the reality of it. That's the way it is. That's the way God made it to be because the original design was, was heaven. Nobody was ever destined to go to hell. You read the scriptures, the scriptures say hell was created by God but for the devil and his angels. People were not supposed to go to hell. Nobody, no human being was supposed to go to uh, hell. The human being is not meant for hell. If spiritual beings like the devil and fallen angels, they're superior in power, they're superior in strength, they're superior than human beings in every way, shape, and form. And they're going to be tormented. Just imagine how much a human soul is really heavy. It's a heavy word. But that is the reality. Right? And like you mentioned earlier, when people sell their soul to the devil, it's, it's, it's like this, right on part of what you said. People don't have the title. Like, somebody's trying to sell you your sister's car. <laughs> they don't have the title. They can give you the keys, but at the end of the day, you don't have the title to the car. And you mentioned a beautiful thing in, in when when the devil was tempting Jesus. I, I always thought about it like, why, why was it tempting for Jesus to be told by the devil, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. And it says there in the scriptures that the devil took Jesus through a whole moment in time. But it got to the point where it became a temptation for Jesus because he, if you read the entire Old Testament, you will always see God longing after the souls of Israel, after the hearts of Israel. God has always wanted the, oh, siento presencia. God has always wanted the hearts of Israel since the very, since after Noah, even with Adam. Adam, the, the whole point of Adam being made was because God made Adam and he said spend time with me that was the entire point get to know me just walk with me be with me I made you a son God called Adam his son that was the whole point that's all he's, that's that's what he's always wanted from from Israel when he let them out of Egypt he grabbed them by the hand it says there in the New Testament it doesn't say it in the Old Testament but it says it in the New Testament siento presencia 
in Hebrews, when God led Israel, Shamakaya, when God led Israel out of Egypt, Jesus was holding them by the hand, not literally, but in the spiritually. That pillar of fire, that angel of the Lord that was guiding them out was was Jesus holding them by the hand. My child, let me bring you out of slavery. And every single time they cheated on Jesus, they cheated on God with idols, the golden calves, other gods. Solomon cheated on God with all his concubines and introduced them to foreign gods. So why, why did Jesus find that tempting when the devil took him all in the moment of time, in time to every nation? Like it says there, all the nations in the moment of time because Jesus is like, I've always wanted your heart. I've always wanted your hearts. And it was tempting for Jesus. He's like, will I finally get your heart? In his mind, it was, it was probably tempting. He did not submit. The heart of God desired that the people of Israel that he's been with since Exodus recognize Jesus in human, God in human form. Jesus came to the earth hoping my Israelites will recognize me. God knew already. God is omniscient. He knows everything. He's everywhere. Past, present, and future. But God's heart always longs for this. God's heart always longs. I came to you in human form. Why didn't you recognize me? Instead of you recognizing me, you crucified me. I came here to show you my heart in person. And you killed me. That's what Jesus wanted. That's The devil knew that that's what Jesus wanted at the mount. That's why he wanted to tempt him. And, it, and the, that... Why do they call the devil the devil? You think about it, the evil. <clears throat> it's evil to tell Jesus, look at these people that don't love you. Look at these people that you love with all your heart. And look at them not love you. Bow to me and I'll make them love you. I'll let go of their, all, all, because the Bible does say, Satan is, is, is a God, lowercase g God of this world who blinds the minds of those that do not believe. So, what the devil was telling Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, I'll take my claws off their eyes and they'll see you for who you are. But again, what is the what is the Bible say the devil is? The father of lies. He was a liar from the very beginning. But what, what does it mean to worship in spirit and in truth? My human body can be here right now. But the Holy Spirit can take me somewhere else. In the spirit. To worship in spirit and in truth. Is to be in the spirit. No, you're not here. You're not here. Your body is here physically, but you're not here. Sometimes I'll catch myself in the classroom... When the teacher is teaching, my mind will just go with the Lord. And people will call that daydreaming. That's crazy, bro. I'm like, maybe I'm just a daydreamer. But in reality, the Holy Spirit reveals to me, no, I'm taking you somewhere else. In the Spirit, I'm showing you things. In the Spirit realm. Not all the time. But that's one of the ways that I can tangibly say that that's one of the ways that I've experienced it. And in truth, the character of Christ. You worship God, how do you, what is one way to worship God in spirit and in truth? In truth, the character of Christ, who is Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. So you want to worship God in truth, you're going to want to conform to the character of Christ. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and, and all your mind, and love one another as I have loved you. And it's not, it's not an option when Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you, it was a command. So one of the ways to worship God, and it says there in the Word of God, is for us to be a living sacrifice. Meaning, if we don't want to do something, if we don't want to uh, love the brother because it's inconvenient for us, Jesus is saying that it's a command. And what you, Let's go more profound. It's like God told the sun to shine. The command that God gave the sun is you are to bear light. The moment that the sun stops shining, the reason that it's nighttime right now is because the sun is still shining, but the sun is still shining on the other side of the world. But when the earth rotates, the sun will the sun will still be shining. Because why? Because that's the command that God gave the sun to do. He told the God told the oceans, stay where you are. Do not pass your borders. I planted you there. Do not cross that line. Do not shoma kaya. Do not leave your estate like the angels left their estate. It says that in the book of Jude. The angel, do not be like the angels who left their estate and God tossed them into hell for disobedience and for rebellion. Yeah. The moment the sun stops shining, stops shining. The moment the sea 
leaves its borders. The moment the grass stops being green. The moment a tree. Why do you think God cursed the fig tree? God cursed the fig tree because it, it did not give Jesus the fruit. He, the, the disciples said, why do you curse the fig tree? You know, give it a little while. You know, like maybe maybe it'll produce fruit eventually. And Jesus is like, fine. And he came back and it still didn't produce any fruit. And Jesus wanted fruit from the tree. That, that tree rebelled. Different dimension. That tree rebelled against God. And it was disobedient. That's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. And the human, a human is, is, in, is constantly rebellion. The human is, is the only being besides animals. Because they eat each other. That wasn't God's original design. Back then in the Garden of Eden, you could put a lion and you could put a giraffe and they'll live in harmony. Yeah. Right? Sin is what caused the lion to eat the giraffe. Sin is what caused the lion to hunt the human down. Right? And the human vice versa for food. Yeah. Because what did God say? Out of the ground you shall eat. Out of your labor you shall eat. You shall put food on the table out of your labor. And out of out of your disobedience, woman, you will have pain in childbirth. There were consequences to the sin. Yeah. So the the human being is the only Besides the animal, the only thing that is constantly in disobedience. God told the sun to shine, it's still shining. God told the sea, stay in your place, and it stays in its place. But why is it that when I tell human, this is God saying, why is it that when I tell a human being to do something, it wants to do the opposite? It's the only thing that wants to do the opposite. Yeah. So every time that we're in disobedience and we don't obey the commands, the commandments of Christ, we're in rebellion to God. We're saying, God, I don't value your word. And people think of that as lightly, like, oh, you know what, God will forgive me. But to God, it's a very big deal. Yeah. You have no idea. Just because you don't see God doesn't mean that God, that it's not a serious thing. Maybe right now in this dimension, it will not make sense. But it will make sense in the next life. In the other dimensions, it does make sense. The angels in heaven, the angels in heaven don't, don't the, the human beings are the only entitled ones to say, God, why, why, why do I have to conform to you? Meanwhile, the angels in heaven are saying, Superior power, superior knowledge, superior strength. The angels told God, God, why on earth are you showing so much mercy to this fallen race? Why? They're not worthy, and we're not worthy. But God in His mercy and His love decided, you know what? They make mistakes, but the intentional ones, I'm going to send my son down in the form of a human being. I will, and I will dwell in that, in that tent. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. The intentional ones that seek me, that repent and turn from their ways, the ones that are born again and, be, and put their trust in me genuinely, the, one that, the ones that produce fruit, the ones that have evidence of love for me and obedience for me, I will grant them mercy and grace. Mm. And people still decide to step on that. And they say grace applies to, to, to you whether you decide to consciously obey God or not. And that's not the Bible. The Bible says that people can fall away from grace. Remember, the human being is one of the only things that is rebellious to the command of God. Everything else, the cosmic things are in obedience to God. Why do you think there hasn't been any asteroids that, hit, that have hit the earth by the command of God? Yeah. Right? If even, if even the oceans fear God, the oceans which can drown the entire world, there's more water in the world than there is land. Yeah. The oceans obey God and they are mighty, roaring oceans. Yet the human being stands up to God and shakes their fist at him. They don't know any better. Changes the way you want to be obedient towards God. At first there's shame, but then there's like, I've done it enough. It's not too much. It kind of makes you reflect on in, in Genesis when, when Eve was first tempted by the serpent. And this, this really caught my eye because it really reflects on... How we see sin, how we get into, how we fall into temptation. Let me see. Here it is, the fall of man, chapter three. Okay, here it is, verse four. The ser then the serpent said to the woman, "You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil." So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. And the eyes of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed big leaves together and made themselves coverings. So in verse 6, 
I think that pretty much sums up how we see to any type of sin, any type of temptation. So it says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so she's kind of viewed it as like, hmm, like this is interesting, maybe it's not so bad. And it was pleasant to the eyes. Now you're looking at it by the eyes, out of out of the eyes, uh, I think, uh, to you sin. There's a verse that like that, it relates up something through the eyes. Right. But it was pleasant to the eyes and it was a tree a uh, tree desirable to make one wise when you start to see something a temptation is like not only does it look good now I desire it and there's going to be something coming out of it something pleasurable after this maybe it is worth worth trying out so then it says that she took of its fruit and she ate and she gave it to her husband with her and he ate once you give in to that sin it's unfortunately common for the non-believer sometimes even the believer depending where their faith is at their repentance that they're quick to say hey you need to come try this too and before you know it, you have a domino effect coming in of a whole bunch of sinners coming in the blind leading the blind the blind leading the blind and even in in the the church unfortunately which is i see it more because i'm we're in a younger adult stage i see it more common with the youth and the young adults if one is sending on the behind the scenes, usually there's a group yeah. that they're doing it together because Sadly. they're trying to be a certain way for the church to see, but behind the scenes is like, we can still do this, but let's just keep it on the side over here. I was able, I was able to meet a good friend of mine who's, who's now in the faith. He has an amazing testimony how God's been working through him these last few years, but he was one of those guys. He admitted it. He's like, we were going to church, lifting up our hands, jumping, everything, but we would go over here to somebody's house and we just would drink till we couldn't walk anymore to, yeah. to the max. And so one day, one of those buddies of his that was going to go to drink with them, he he had a, a, a fellow sister in Christ with him in the car. They were going to they were gonna go play some. He was a musician, that other yeah. guy, he was a guitarist. He was gonna go play somewhere, and he said, "Hey, let me, let me make a quick stop at, at a buddy's house." And she's like, "Okay, that's fine." He was her ride, and so he stops at the house really fast, and he starts drinking with him. He wanted to get a quick drink before he goes to play. Can you believe that? Wow. And so the girl stayed in the car, and so this guy took it overboard too fast. He got drunk, drunk to the floor, and so my buddy, he's like, um. This guy, didn't you have to play somewhere? And he's like, yeah, and there's and there's someone with me in the car that she's waiting on me. He's like, what the heck? You know, well, like, my, I might as well take her because she has a responsibility. She's a, She was one of the singers. And so he goes to see her, and lo and behold, they start having a uh, conversation about Christ and sin, and he's just like, this is a bunch of baloney because if you say that Christians are, are supposed to be behaving a certain way, but we're all over here like this, like how can this be legit? And he's a natural skeptic, so he starts throwing her questions. And she, she says, look, I don't know the answer to all of your questions, but it's clear you have questions. Come to church and, and you'll see. Like, come to see. And so he goes, and lo and behold, whoever was speaking that day just had a word that was like almost coincidental for him to hear. But with God, there's no coincidences, man. Amen. I, I've heard too many stories where people will finally go to church after some time or they finally are willing to see, oh, let's see what it's about. Let's see what they're going to talk about. And it just so happens that whoever spoke that day had a word that they needed to hear. And it changes. But that's how you know God's trying to bring them to Him because He's trying to, to change them, to save them, which is ultimately done through Christ. But... He'll, he'll find a way to, to at least give you the opportunity to hear about His gospel again, to hear Definitely. about what He can do Definitely. in your life for His glory more than anything. Definitely. Not because He wants you to just enjoy an earthly life full of blessing and pleasure, but the ultimate blessing, the ultimate pleasure you could have is to be in communion with Him for all eternity. Amen. Amen. But with the church sinning behind, behind the scenes, it's like we're... Who keeps them accountable? Are they being pressured too much by the parents? Is it too too much religion being thrown on them rather than more grace being thrown on them? 
are they willing to hear them out or is it too much pressure so they just feel they need to just hide it because they still want to do it and so that's that's where I see that it's very strong with the youth with the young adults even because they they get used to expectations they get used to pressure so they want to find a way to still give into what their sin is but without getting caught but still put on a front face for everyone to see right and I've, I've had some interesting conversations with other believers up and they've opened up and said look man like I wasn't in, in like a strong like sin or anything like I wasn't at like at a high level but I was interested in sinning I, I thought it looked pleasing to the eye I thought it looked desirable to make one wise but I out but that conviction was there I just felt like I was saying like no you already know better if you go in you're, you're gonna have a hard time getting back out of it and so I just said like oh, God, I want to do these things but like I know it's it's not pleasing to you so I just kept holding back I kept holding back right right and God knows that you know I had my moments where I did give into some temptations but out of that I, I I knew I knew like this is not the way God meant it to be I I feel like I'm just rebelling God and that's pretty much what it was I wasn't being obedient to him but I said God if I truly am a follower of yours I don't want to look at sin and think this is pleasurable this is something that seems good in my eyes like the world calls it now yeah what is bad they call it good what is good yeah. they call it bad I don't want to be justifying all of the sins that I make to the point where I just say screw it I'm just gonna keep going might as well and so what testimony what what impact does that make on those that look up to me not that I'm the one that they should be looking up to it's Christ right as right, Paul right. says imitate me as I imitate Christ right but to an extent sometimes we do have an impact on those that look up to us and I said God if I'm gonna cause our brother to stumble then no just get me the heck out of this that's why that's why the scripture says to flee from temptation because Lord knows that your flesh is gonna want to give in so just don't put yourself in a position to definitely to sin so maybe if, if he was a little bit um, quick to quicker to think to just say I need to get the heck out of here like just stop talking to this guy he's t he's telling me to rebel God maybe she would have not given in but everything serves a purpose of course but if when it comes to sin if you start you're starting to see something that's worth justifying just get out of that position just get out of there because you're more than likely gonna give in yeah and I've seen people confuse it with with uh, another brother that says resist the devil and you'll flee from you people like to think resist temptation but it's not really like that because you're always going to give in the one you should be resisting is the devil himself and his lies you resist and he and he likes to make you doubt the authority that's in you through the holy spirit but if you say no put on the armor of god and he's going to flee from you but with temptation you do need to flee because you are going to give in unfortunately you might hold up for a while but eventually it'll it'll creep up into you you start saying you know what i'm already here might as well and you start going into a, a deeper darker hole that it just leads to a chain reaction of things but yeah. it's it's never worth it i agree it's, it's a slippery slope the whole the whole thing is a slippery slope um temptation in general any any temptation what can be temptation for me might not be temptation for you and vice versa what might be temptation for you might not be a temptation for me right and you bring up an interesting point because many people, especially younger adults, young adults, youth, um, they're they're very. It's it's only here in America that you really see a majority of rebellious younger people. Where does that come from? That comes from um, this doctrine that makes them feel entitled. Makes them feel entitled. Where, where do they get that from? They get that from the media. From what they consume and not just willful things that they consume like they're not they're not saying i'm choosing to listen to this no it's it's media that's put in front of their face it's tiktok videos that are put in front of their face that makes them feel entitled and indoctrinates them with doctrines of demons they're doctrines of devils god is not pro-rebellion and what self-entitlement is it's a form of rebellion it's what it is so when that seed gets planted in the mind of a younger person, they don't have any wisdom. Unless God gives them supernatural godly wisdom, 
they don't have any wisdom because they don't have any life experience so to them that is their mindset and that is their view of the world because they don't know any better they've never been anywhere else and I'm not talking about carnally they don't have any life experiences but not only that the the real type of wisdom like you said is is godly wisdom it's godly wisdom is it's insight from the Holy Spirit it's not it's spiritual knowledge understanding and and wisdom what is what is what does the word of God say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Mm -hmm. So whatever the young person, the youth, young adult is going through on their phone, on the, on TikTok or, or whatever they go on, what is put in front of them is what they'll consume, willingly or unwillingly, because these seeds are planted in the subconscious mind and they take root. They take root in the mind. The, even like likewise, like you mentioned earlier, planting seeds, the gospel is is a form of a seed. And the bird comes to take it away, the devil. Mm -hmm. So, it, the gospel is is a form of, of, of seed that is planted in, in, in a person's mind, in a person's soul. Right? It's a doctrine. A doctrine, a way of thinking, a way of, of doing things. In this case, the gospel is a way of doing things according to the Lord. Heaven. It's heaven on earth because that is the will of God. God's will on the earth is, is to bring heaven to the earth. Eventually, it, it will happen. New Jerusalem will come down like a bride down the wedding aisle. Shama. That's how it will be. Eventually, it will happen. But, because the youth consumes such things which is trash, it is, it is utter garbage. And, and I don't get why churches even affirm it. Yeah. Right? Churches, of, I mean, some churches do, um, they counter it and they, they go on social media and they do the good thing. They post godly content. But there there can be... I've seen some youth groups that can probably go on social media just to promote foolishness. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's a sad thing. But more than anything, a lot of youth, sadly, they, they grow up in the church, but they leave God completely. And at some point, they even end up regretfully hating God. Because they were not introduced... To the real God of the Bible They were introduced to probably some man's idea That affirmed their Their sin and, and, and made them Made them feel even entitled <coughs> You'll be surprised How many people in the pulpit actually Tell the younger people to be entitled It's about you It's about you You, 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 you But what does Jesus teach? Jesus taught you have to die to yourself yeah, you, you, you have to nail your passions to the cross. It is no like Paul said, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Why don't we hear that type of message anymore, bro? Why don't we hear that type of message like in, in the big churches? You know what I mean? Like it's all about you. Empowerment you. And there is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But the empowerment of the Holy Spirit will ultimately lead you to Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit he, Shama. The the Bible said that the Holy Spirit did not come to bear witness unto himself. But to Yeshua, to Jesus. Yeah. So you get empowerment so that you can submit to Jesus. Amen. So it comes full circle eventually. Yeah. Siento presencia. <laughs> it Amen. comes full circle eventually. It doesn't, it doesn't mean empowerment so that you can do your own selfish thing. Hear me, watcher. It does not mean empowerment from the Holy Ghost. It does not mean so that you can go and, and do supernatural things for your own glory. It means for you to die to yourself, conform to the will of Jesus, to be like Jesus. First of all, to love the heart of God. To love the heart of God. And when you love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, your, your mind, and all your soul, you are willing to submit to the image of Jesus. That is the true empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That is the real fruit of the Spirit. That is real evidence that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. When you say, God, I want to do this, but I love you more. So I want to be like Jesus because I love you, Jesus. That is the real empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You will have supernatural power for the glory of God. And because God loves you, so He's like, here, here's, here's a, a weapon in case the devil approaches you. Here's, here's a weapon. Si te, si se te acerca el diablo, tú le pegas al diablo. That is the sword of the Spirit. That is the word of God. God loved you enough to give you an, a body armor. Ephesians 6, 12. The whole armor of God. God loves you enough. He's like, here. I'm giving you protection. I'm giving you an armor. The helmet of salvation. The body armor of righteousness. The belt of truth. The shield of faith. The shoes of peace. And the sword of the spirit. Si, te, si, si se te acerca el diablo. No le tengas miedo. Pelea. Dale guerra al diablo. Ponte bravo con el diablo. No le tengas misericordia al diablo. Tenle misericordia al humano. Pero no le tengas misericordia al diablo. 
Oh, dude, Amen. I'm flowing, bro. That's like, woo! Let's go, baby. <laughs> How's the lighting look? Uh, good. Yeah. It's because the light in there actually reflects. Yeah. So God was Ooh. merciful with your friend, bro. Amen. Because there's many young people that can know it, like, God, God was merciful. If, he, if your friend repented from a message and he made a complete 180 turn, he submitted to the feet of Jesus and he loves the Lord with all, with, with, and he repented and he became a new creation in the Lord Jesus for real. Yeah. For real. And that was the act of the mercy of God. Because there are other youth that go through similar things, if not worse. And God gives them a message one time. God gives them a message the second time. And God's like, please do not make me do what I'm about to do. Listen to me right now while you still can. And they still go their own way. The, 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 the young believer, the lukewarm young adult that was still rebellious after the third message will get hit with the rod of correction. And that rod of correction is very painful. That rod of correction is not anything that you will enjoy. God will do that so that your soul does not get lost. God will do that so that he can save your soul from hell. Paul even handed people over to the devil and he said, Atormentalos hasta que se arrepientan. For the good of their soul. Not because God and Paul wanted to do harm to them. He's like, if that's what it takes for you to come to Jesus, so be it. And that's what it's going to take for you to be at the, uh, to, for you to realize that you are at the mercy of God. And that you have to be born again. That you have to repent. And you have to love the Lord your God. And then so be it. But it does not have to get to that point. God does not want to hit you with the rod of correction. But He will, for the sake of your soul, young person, listen to me right now when I'm talking to you. I've heard of many stories that do not go well for, for young people. Young ladies and young men alike. It does not go well for them when they rebel against God after He's given them one, two, three, four, even five messages. Do not be that person. You are hearing this message because God led you to this video. Repent from your sin 100%. Become a new creation in Jesus Christ. And it will be the best relationship I guarantee that you will ever have in your lifetime. It might not benefit you in the flesh. Your flesh might hate some, some of the things you might have. You, you will give up. It is not an option for you to die to yourself. It is a command from God to die to this world and come alive in the spirit but it is 100% worth it you will not have 100% everything you want everything you're asking God for might not be yours because God wants to give you better things but not material things spiritual things things that do not have an expiration date stop sending your things on things that, that stop sending your mind and your eyes on things that have an expiration date that doesn't matter the car doesn't matter that girlfriend that's running off with another dude does not matter that guy you see running around with other girls does not matter what matters right now is your repentance and give your heart to God because if you don't give your heart to God and you go if you, if you leave this earth tonight you will not make heaven if you don't repent if you're in willful sin and you know better you will not make heaven you will be rebellious in the eyes of God and you denied the paid in full price that Jesus did for you on the cross Jesus is giving you that check to pay off everything you owe if you continue if you continue in your rebellious ways you are telling Jesus, I do not need your check. I can pay it off on my own. But you will not pay it off on your own. You can't. It's, it's impossible. If you go that route, I guarantee you, God will not accept your payment because it's not valid. Because it comes from, from human flesh. It is, what is that called? That's called self-righteousness. You, you cannot be self-righteous in the eyes of God. You have to humble yourself and realize, I can't do this on my own. I need Jesus. You have to acknowledge that you are a sinner in order for you to realize your need for Christ. You have to realize how bad off you are without Jesus. You have to notice how bad the situation is without Jesus. And this is just one reality. But the next reality is the one that really counts. That's why Jesus often preached. And even in Colossians, Paul reiterated, Do not set your minds on the things of earth, but on the things of heaven. Why? Because eventually, this is like, like, like the dream realm, but not like in, in a way that it's not tangible. But the dream realm that it's temporary. Eventually, you will wake up to the real reality of the reality with, with God or without God. That is the real reality of you that, that is fully awake. Not biblically, hundred like word for word, but get what I'm trying to say. Eventually, this, this whole facade, this is not a facade, this is reality. This is a reality. But the real reality is the one that comes after you pass away. Or after God takes you and God comes for His bride.
before you even pass away. And that is a reality that matters. And that is nothing to play with because that is what really matters. That these, t these things are just temporary, man. That's why Jesus said, do not be anxious about anything because nothing here matters. The only thing that matters is you rescuing people from hell. Tell them, preach, preach the gospel. My brother, you're doing an amazing job. I admire that, bro. You're doing the will of God. How beautiful are the feet of messengers that bring the good news of the gospel. That, that, that is what matters. And keeping the sheep from falling away, from leaving the pen. That is what matters. Nothing, the material things do not matter. Marriage is good. Marriage is 100% good. That is a representation of the bride, which is the church and Jesus. That is beautiful. And that is important also, because God gave in the Garden of Eden Eve to Adam, right? But I'm saying the secondary things, jobs are important, but they're not the cream of the crop. A house is important, but it's not the cream of the crop. We cannot be ungrateful for what we already have. When we ask God for, for, the, for our dreams, material things, we're basically telling God, I'm, I, I mean, thank you, but I, I prefer that to God. That's an insult. It's saying what you gave me is not good enough. But it doesn't matter. Do not set your things on the things of this world, but on the things of heaven, the eternal things that do not have an expiration date, where no moth destroys, where no thief can steal. Those purses are eternal. No mind has seen, no mind, no eye has seen, no mind has conceived, and no ear has heard for the wonderful things that God has in store for them. And it's not talking about earthly things, it's talking about heavenly things. Yeah. I think it helps that the lighting of this building is here. Yes, yeah, the inside hits us. It's nice and loud, they can see us. Hey. I hope it gets edited, it's fine. And you know what the sad thing is, bro? People will hear this message and they'll say, what a hateful message. That's when you know that the devil has blinded the mind. Even Christians will look at this and say, this dude's a bigot. This dude is being too hateful. But that's not the case. The reality of that is, unfortunately, you've been fed too much Willy Wonka. You've been fed too much candy. You've been fed things that scratch your itchy ears. You've been fed lies that when the truth of the Word of God, the way that it really is, comes your way you reject it it's like if you give a piece of steak to somebody that's developing like muscular wise if they want to develop strength they gotta eat steak if they eat candy it might fill them up but it will not make they'll, they'll be weak and fragile when you give that person that's weak and fragile a steak they will reject the steak because they are used to the sweet things that are very unhealthy for them. We cannot be conditioned to hear lies anymore and have truths. We have to hear the truth of the realities of for what it really is. Why does that happen, bro? Like, why, why do why do people hear these type of messages? And in general, in general, bro, like, why do people hear these type of messages, and and say, brother, you or sister, you're you're preaching hateful. But that's what the word of God says. Isn't that why they even go to church in the first place? To hear the truth. But when they hear the truth, they reject it because it's, they, they want to go to their idea of what church is supposed to be. They want to go hear a sermon of their, of their own imagination of what it's supposed to be. But why, why do people do that, bro? Multiple reasons. One of them, obviously, the, the ruining of the gospel, how it's meant to be shared and told. Even... This even happened with the early church. Look at Paul when he got after Peter. When he was saying, oh, you got to still get circumcised like the Jews if you're going to believe in Jesus. And then Paul was like, what the heck are you doing, bro? Like, so then was Jesus Christ's sacrifice not enough to take care of that? So now with today's church, they I think they just care more about giving them a message that they want to hear so they keep coming back. And then at the same time, people, they just want to hear what they want to hear. And it could also be a reflection that they're not even looking at the Word themselves. They think that the Word is supposed to revolve around their life. I, I see social media pages all the time posting scriptures totally out of context, but they use it in a way that benefits them. I think probably one of the more famous ones is like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things Amen. through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> yeah. But the context of it, if, I, if I'm, I'm going to say it correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, 
uh, the Apostle Paul, I, um, he was talking about the, the trials he was facing as a as a servant of God. I think he was in prison, I believe, when he wrote the letter of the Philippians yeah. to the Philippian church. And it, it, it wows me, that entire letter, because throughout this whole letter, he's just joyful. He, like He's excited for the Philippian church of how much it's been growing. And so he's like, despite I'm going through all these things, I know that even still through Christ, who's the one who is the source of my strength, I can I can still all things I can still do, do all things for His glory. And but you see the world and then using it as like, oh, I can do all things through Christ. I'm gonna lift these two plates, shoulder press it really yeah. fast in the gym, <laughs> or they're like, I'm about to score 40 points in a basketball game. You know, I'm gonna hold an amazing play in the football game, the volleyball game. It, I see it more common with sports, but also people use it for their businesses and for other things that are, that to an extent, they, it's important as a human life. Yeah. you got to work and stuff, but yeah. but to use it out of context to your own benefit, I think that's why people don't like hearing messages like these where they, they preach the word in its truth. If the word is not convicting you, correcting you, edifying you, then something's wrong. If you're just trying to seek it just to hear something good about yourself that makes you feel better, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm such amazing, like God loves me how I am, like nothing needs to change. I just want to hear, keep hearing good things so I can keep coming back to church, so I can keep being around this group of people, or this pasture, etc. Like, if it's not really edifying you, if you don't feel that uncomfortableness that says, dang, I'm a sinner, I this needs to change, God doesn't approve of this, and I... And I seek God's approval, not the people that I'm around with's approval. If that's not coming into you, then you're always going to be disgusted with messages like these, where we speak to edify a church or to encourage, hopefully, a new believer to come into the faith Amen. and to shine the light of God's word onto somebody's life to where they say, I'm a sinner, the only one that's perfect is Christ, and I want to follow Him because only He can change me to be more like Him so that I am acceptable in God's eyes. Amen. I I used to be that that dude that would <laughs> that would think about Philippians four thirteen when when I used to lift the the weights. But it, it, <laughs> me too, me too. Definitely. <laughs> and um, I I thought of the word of God as I'm being completely honest with you, bro. I thought it. I thought about it as this cute thing when I was not with the Lord 100%. When I got to know the heart of God, when I met Jesus for myself, when He revealed Himself to me, not when I got to meet Him, when He revealed Himself to me in my heart, in my mind, when 2 plus 2 equals 4 clicked in my head, when it makes shama, when it, makes, when it made sense in my, in my mind and in my spirit, because the Holy Spirit revealed it, I, I began to really crave more, more knowledge of the Word of God, but not the Scriptures, so that I can become intellectual. No, I wanted to know what God is trying to say in the Word. I'm like, God, okay, 413, I can do all things, but what what are you trying to say? And the Holy Spirit gave me that craving, and He'll give you that craving too if you ask Him for it. I, I'm like, God, what 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 are you what are you trying to say? I I get that you, people take it out of context, but what is the context of it? And it's right a part of what you said. Through the trials, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Because Paul wanted to give up. His flesh wanted to give up. But he loved the Lord so much, he's like, never. I'm here for your benefit. Philippians 1.25, I'm only here for your benefit. I can be with him in, the, in heaven. I can die right now. And it will be more beneficial to me. But because I want to be of a benefit to you, I'm going to keep on walking this walk for you. But his flesh was like, mm. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, la prisión, el barco, the viper, he got bit by a snake. Paul got sometimes tortured for the Lord. Yeah, His flesh, I'm pretty sure he's like, Man, like I don't, I don't want to go through all this. But the, the Holy Spirit reminded him, keep going. Man. Keep going. That's why he would tell Timoth Timothy, keep fighting the good fight. Keep fighting the good fight for what it is. So 2 plus 2 equals 4 will make sense. Only the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. I was talking to Brother Albert right now before we even started the, the, the video. And, and um, something that just came to me was like, imagine how many people have heard of Jesus, but they don't know who He is. And even if they hear that He's the Son of God, it doesn't click in their minds. Why? Because that's something that only God can 
reveal it to you. Not reveal it to you in a word, but reveal it to you so that it makes sense. So that it, it clicks up here. It's not going to click up here. It's not going to click in your spirit unless the Holy Spirit gives you that revelation. Because what happened with Peter? Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. God revealed this. God, my Father, revealed it to you. Meaning, it didn't make sense. It, won't, it wouldn't have made sense if, if somebody else came up with a theory. He would probably would have brushed it off. But because God revealed it to him, God, God the Father revealed it to him, it, it made sense in his mind. It makes sense in his mind. <sighs> have you um have you have you heard of Ray Comfort? Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching him a lot. Like like The Way of the Master Gospel Technique. Yeah. I, I was able to use it at uh, my last trip. It's it's really beneficial, bro. It's amazing. Like God has been leading me to to to, um, to listen to, to and just learn from him. The way he does things. And this is for you. Watch. If you've ever if you've ever even thought a lustful thought. You know where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you've even thought of a lustful thought, if you've even stolen a can of soda in your lifetime, to God you're an adulterer and you are a thief. For those small things, why? Because of what we spoke earlier. You are in rebellion. The sun does not stop shining. If the sun stops shining, it will be in disobedience to the command of God. If the sea leaves its domain its boundary it would be a rebellion to god even if it were to leave for one second it would automatically be counted as rebellion because god is holy and god is perfect so even as little as stealing a, a can of soda or as little as as lusting after someone else to god that's already a blemish so on judgment day when god judges you by those standards alone there's more standards but just to keep it brief and so that you you, you can understand our perspective the perspective of the Word of God, the essence of Jesus coming to die for you and resurrected, so that He can also partake in the things that He, that 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 He has. We can also inherit what He has. That's how good God is. If you, if even as little as stealing a can of soda in your entire lifetime, you're already blemished in the eyes of God. That is why you need Jesus, because Jesus paid your fine for everything, past, present, and future. But you have to be intentional in repenting. You have to be intentional in being born again. John 3, when Jesus was talking to a Pharisee, which was a person that was very knowledgeable in the, in, in the scriptures, he told them, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to be born again of water and of the spirit. If you're not born of, of the spirit or of water, like I'm quoting Jesus, you will not enter the kingdom of God because you're, you're still, you have not made a conscious decision to leave behind the ways of old for him repentance by itself will not do anything belief in God by itself will not do anything because if your belief in God is genuine then you will repent because you believe in the consequences and that's where the fear of God kicks in the fear of God is not your enemy the fear of God is your best friend because that is wisdom is your best friend Proverbs says wisdom love wisdom like a sister wisdom will lead you to repent wisdom will tell you these are the consequences in the act for eternity if you do not repent wisdom will tell you choose Jesus for your own good for your own sake repent of your sins be born again make a conscious make a conscious decision to say Lord Jesus I've had it with this life and nothing bad has to be happening in your life for you to make that decision make it right now meanwhile nothing bad is happening in your life many people have to go through bad stuff in order for them to come to this decision but be grateful if you're not going through anything Jesus is giving you the opportunity right now repent be born again of water and spirit. To be born again is to is to, is to repent in your mind and, and turn to God. It's both things. One of those things, it, it doesn't work. You need you need both. You need you need to turn away consciously from the old life, from sin, saying, I don't want to live the way that I've lived. And turn to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I want I want I'm willing to follow you. I'm willing to deny myself, pick up my cross, and follow you. When you really do that from your heart, that means that your belief in God is genuine. Faith without works is dead. I can talk the talk all I want, but if I don't walk the talk, then the talk has no weight to it. I can tell my brother Albert, yada, 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 but if I don't back it up with, with evidence of yada, 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 if I don't back it up with results, then is what it, are my claims valid? Not at all. Okay. You down for that? Okay. Let's do it. Let's go, let's go.
Yeah. I'm doing. I'll right. do anything, bro. Let me just tone this up. Do me a favor. Like the video. Please like the video. Subscribe. Share it with a friend. Leave a comment down below about your thoughts. Tell me what you think of this conversation. Did it edify you or not? Give me your thoughts. I want to hear them. Hit that bell notification. Every time we upload a video, you'll be notified. All right. Till next time. Peace.